Tommy with Elevation every weekend here. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to give you some detailed feedback on the trail performance of my 2022 Trek Pro Caliber 9.5 in essentially stock form. The only changes I've made to the bike are the saddle, the grips, and the pedals. In this video, you'll see some trail footage from here in Colorado, but also some footage from a trip I made to Northeast Ohio, which definitely gives a different style of riding than here in Colorado. In any of the footage you see from here in Colorado, I have Shimano clipless pedals on the bike, but all the footage you'll see from Ohio I am running flat pedals. If you do want any detailed specs on the bike I will link other videos down in the description below. This video is focused strictly on trail performance. I do really want to highlight that this bike is still running the bone stock Bontrager 2.25 XR2 tires which I would not even consider a moderate trail tire. I mean, these are pure XC tires in size and tread for lightweight and fast rolling resistance. So this video is going to cover a summer of trail riding I've done as I said in Northeast Ohio and here in Colorado. Colorado. The Ohio trip gave me the ability to really test the bike in much wetter conditions than I'm used to here in Colorado. The conditions were impacted by some recent heavy rains and essentially 100% humidity, which resulted in conditions including some slippery tree roots and rocks and loamy undercover. The trails were quite a bit lower speed than I'm used to here in Colorado as well, as there were a number of trees that I had to navigate around as obstacles. I was riding with my brother on these rides in Ohio, and he was riding a Trek fuel full suspension bike with much more aggressive tires. So I was really curious to see how the Pro Cal would be able to keep up. So let's shift over to some ride footage as I discuss how the Trek Pro Caliber 9.5 handles on the trails. The first bit of trail footage here in Ohio is not particularly extreme, but with the damp trail conditions, it was a good test of twisty terrain with a lot of wood and root features and some rocks mixed in as well. There's also a fair amount of loamy, damp terrain from the fallen leaves, and the back portion of the trail gets into a little descending and climbing, all while navigating the turns and fairly close tree presence as well. Definitely a good solid entry level test of the bike overall, and it performed well. The tires gripped surprisingly well on this type of riding, especially on the roots the wood planks which I was a bit concerned about. I am running tubeless but still had the tire pressure a little bit higher to prevent pinch flatting on all of the roots. The fork did a serviceable job handling all the impacts and again this is not a test at the edge of the bike's limits but a good first test and a good example of some riding in some common midwest conditions. Now shifting locations but still in Ohio we decided to try some different and more technical riding at the West Branch Trail System. We briefly tried to ride a black diamond trail even though it had rain heavily the night before and the sign indicated to ride only when dry. Initially it seemed like the trail would be rideable and I was briefly hopeful that the bike would really overperform here but it was quickly apparent why this dry only warning was necessary. As we got into it it was a very technical rocky trail and the moss covered rocks were like riding on greased ice. The tires were clearly overmatched on this trail but even with better tires I think it was still going to be very challenging as slick as it was. So after realizing this we pulled the plug and moved on to one of the more moderate trails in the area. And still in West Branch, this next trail was a more moderate XC trail, but still a reasonable challenge in spots. Again, there was a fair amount of moisture present just because of the recent rain and 100% humidity. This made for great traction in the dirt as there was very little mud or standing water. And these trails were much more undulating, but the damp conditions still made for plenty of challenges to traction with rocks and roots still present and a lot of close proximity to trees. These trails were a good fit for a modern XC hardtail though, and the bike really had no issues. It was my first time riding these trails, so my unfamiliarity definitely kept me a bit more cautious than I am used to on trails that I know well, but it was still very fun to ride these, and the tires impressed me in their overall traction. I would have loved having time to loop it a few more times and really get a feel for this trail. Last up, I rode some of my fun and familiar trails near me in Colorado. Conditions are much different here, very dry and dusty terrain, much higher speed with some steeper punchy climbs and descents and some bike park features with whoops and banked corners and even a few small jumps. Now I was riding clipped in on the pedals on all the Colorado footage which was something that was new to me on this bike. In these conditions the bike excelled and the tires had good grip considering the higher speeds and the dusty but hard pack conditions. A dropper seat post would have made the faster trail features and the jumps much better here but as someone who does not really jump much I did find riding clipped in to be much better for getting a little air 
and found my overall bike control was improved. As a carbon hardtail, this bike climbs fantastic, and the bike really did meet my expectations for the type of XC trail riding I do here in Colorado. So as you continue to watch some miscellaneous trail footage, let me give some conclusions on the performance of various aspects. The fork, which is a lower end 100 millimeter Rock Shocks Judy, gave serviceable performance on bigger impacts, but it does feel a bit heavy on the front of the bike, and it is lacking with higher frequency, smaller impacts. The Shimano Dior 1x12 drivetrain gave fantastic shifting and range for this type of riding, and the lockout on the rear derailleur worked well in aggressive terrain at speed. The brakes, which are Shimano MT200 hydraulic, did a fine job and didn't seem to be phased in the wet conditions in Ohio. And as mentioned, the tires were definitely the biggest surprise, especially in the Ohio riding. Traction was better than expected, and the durability was a major surprise as they really got worked over pretty good on the rocks and the roots, and I had no failures. As for the centerpiece, the Pro Cal frame, it felt lively and stiff when cornering and putting power through the pedals. It was very maneuverable in the twisty bits, yet was still comfortable as the ISO speed seat post design does a good job smoothing out the ride when seated. Overall, I can say that the bike at the very least has met my expectations thus far and may have even overperformed in a few areas despite the stock spec. I think with a fork upgrade, a dropper seat post, and a slightly more trail worthy tire choice, this bike will really do everything I wanted to do here at speed on the trails in Colorado and beyond. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please drop a like down below. If you're interested in seeing more with the Pro Caliber, including the changes I have in store for it and more XC trail riding here in Colorado, definitely subscribe to the channel. It does really help out. Lots more bike adventures are in store, so definitely stay tuned. Thanks a lot and have a great day.